All right, so uh, what's going on, troops? I thought I'd uh, give you a little kind of clue in as to uh, the mark scheme and how this kind of first section of section A would be uh, marked. So what I didn't run you through was the assessment objective, where you've got to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of media concepts, context, and critical debates. Um, and it's there's a fuller explanation here. The short answer questions are designed to encourage candidates to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of media context and the context in which they're produced. All right. So. Um, they will mark with notations in the margins. Um, you can see for yourself, so if you're covering rep representation, if you're covering narrative form, uh, language of media, that sort of thing, institution, values and ideologies. Uh, theory as well, of course, critical autonomy for the higher level marks um, and the wider context as well. All right. um, so, the first question is just an eight mark question. Um, quite short, quite simple, and in the exam I've given you, it's representation of the mothers or the motherhood um, of the characters. So it's asking for analysis, it's asking for understanding, it's asking for detailed references to both media products. Um, lower down the order, kind of satisfactory, showing a bit of critical autonomy, adequate understanding um, with looking at media language and institution, uh, and references to the media products. So what we really need to be doing is aiming for kind of six to eight marks um, out of the eight marks that first question, but you're not going to go beyond the page, and that may even be too long anyway. Um, so we've got things like, uh, could we talk about how the mothers are represented in terms of sort of pushing trolleys and that sort of thing, just in basic representational terms? Could we look at identity and how the mother's defined by kind of being the one who's the head of the family, perhaps, for the domestic sphere, um, taking part in the shopping, that sort of thing? Uh, a decision maker, perhaps, or with economic power, maybe. Um, you could look at things like, um, the way that kind of the mother takes charge of each situation. So in one hand, you know, you've got the app that's dead handy to scan the products with, and on the other hand, the mother repeats or mimics the behaviour of the child by throwing her own temper tantrum. And far from being immature, it suggests that it's a very sophisticated way to take charge of the situation by showing a little boy how foolish his behaviour is and how the other shoppers all sort of look around in disbelief to see a mother acting out of perhaps character or out of what the stereotypical norms might be for a, a mother behaving in a supermarket. You know, a stereotype might be that a mother's having to control her kids or she's tired or she's worn out from controlling her kids. Um, you know, I'm a father myself taking kids to the supermarket. All they want to do is grab stuff off the shelves all the time or buy new toys or go and look at the video games. And you're like, no, we're here to get the food. No, we're getting food. No, we're just buying food today. And it's that kind of parental control um, that's expressed in the couple of the adverts. So you want to talk about things like um, representation of the mother through through clothing, through facial expression, through gesture, through relationship with the child, uh, but also in terms of media identities. Is this an idealised version of motherhood? You know, being empowered with technology is quite a good representation for the female mother, for the change for life. Um, having kind of a quick stop off to take care of your cold and flu symptoms, you know, empowering yourself with medical products. Obviously, one is much more about selling a product, the other is selling a concept or an app or technology. So again, there are differences in terms of the audience use of the product there. But again, the question is representation of motherhood. So try not to get too tangled up in the product. Try and just focus on that one particular thing. Um, so the second question, go back across, is why are stereotype reversals, and what I mean by that is breaking stereotypes and how stereotypes are broken, um, often used? Uh, so for that, we want to look at the 12 marks. So what you're looking at is evaluation here. So you need to be able to look at how... Um, oh, crikey, I've forgotten the question already. Right, so it's an evaluation question about how stereotypes are broken in this particular text. So again... You're looking at media debates around something I was saying just now for question one, actually, which is that um, do the mothers break stereotypes? Um, is the child in the app change of life advert breaking a stereotype by being really calm and submissive and willing to not buy the sugary cereal and just kind of accept the wheat bit cereal? Um, is it kind of breaking a stereotype for the mothers to throw herself on the floor? Yes, it is. Um, but why is that and how is that presented? Uh, you know, the crying, the screaming, uh, the kind of banging the fists on the floor and kicking the legs, all those kinds of things. And also the fact we get reaction shots, reaction mid shots from the other kind of shoppers. There's an old lady looking on in amusement. There's a guy kind of far off down the aisle looking around with his girlfriend. There are lots of different shots you could talk about in terms of um, the media form. And also looking at things like um, adding in media debates. So, um, 
again, the, some of the stuff I mentioned earlier, economic power of the female character, the fact they're the one doing the shopping and so on and so on. Um, and then the third question, which is consider the value of using apps to promote healthy eating for families. And as I said, you should refer to other media products to support your answer. Well, obviously in this case, you can't talk about the um, first video, uh, second video, excuse me, the VIX one, because there is no app in the VIX advert, um, but you can talk about the app for Change for Life. You can talk about other food-related apps or loyalty-branded apps, so the, the KFC Colonel's Chicken Club, for example. Uh, things like takeaway apps now are available, of course. Um, and, you know, if anything, food consumption is being pushed ever more to be convenient. You know, think about the, the semantics of just eat. You know, don't cook. Just eat. It's kind of bossing you around and trying to make you have that convenience of takeaway and delivery all the time and ordering online through that. Um, so you'd want to evaluate how the Change for Life one targets families. Well, it takes complex nutritional information and breaks it down into small diagrams of sachets of salt and cubes of sugar. Um, it's shown to be quick. You use the barcode scanner whilst you're doing your shopping, so it's technologically convenient. Um, and the fact that it can be a sort of a new way of taking control of information, you know, or taking control of the health and welfare of you and your family. Um, and obviously, then you would start to look at, okay, um, what other values are there? Is it that apps are convenient because smartphones are ubiquitous? Is it that it's because it's in your pocket all the time? You know, where do we use phones? How do we use them? Um, People have fitness apps now as well. There are running tracker apps as well. You know, Couch to 5K is another one. So there are lots of different things to talk about in terms of apps for fitness or for, you know, junk food consumption, really. All right, so I hope that helps just to inspire some ideas for your, um, like, exam practice. Uh, have a little go, see how you get on. We're not, again, expecting more than about three pages tops because it is just the first section of the exam. It's 45 minutes. It's not the whole thing. So do that and see how we get on. All right, cheers. See you on the next one.